So what are the chances that you're gonna need long-term care and what are some planning ways to cover it? That's what we're gonna talk about next. Hey, this is Mel Stubbs. I'm a financial planner at Christie Capital Management where we're helping federal employees plan and execute better retirement. If you need help, click up here to talk to an advisor. Today we're talking about long-term care planning and what are the chances that you're gonna need it and then what are some of the best ways of covering it? Now, JP Morgan does a lot of research every year and here's a page on their long-term care planning. So they've got this lifetime probability of needing assistance with two or more of the activities of daily living. And, and the reason they're saying two or more of the activities of daily living is that's the requirement to qualify for long-term care. So as you can see here, this is the percentage of age 65 plus who actually need assistance with two or more activities. In your 80s, it's somewhere between 22% and 30% of the total population that'll need some help. Now there's different types of care and you can see that there's only needing unpaid care from a family or friend. There's paid home care, there's nursing home care, there's assisted living. Well, you know, we're focused on the paid home care of the nursing home and the assisted living because that involves having to pay for it. If you look here, the unpaid care route, you can see that 51% of the providing is coming from adult children, 27% from other family members, 23% non-relatives, 7% from a spouse. Most people that we talk to that are planning, they don't wanna be having family members take care of them. They want to plan it out in advance to have professionals do it, not their family. So the duration of paid care for 65 plus, if paid care is used, is 38% for men, 33% for women, will use it less than three years. From three to five years, it's 26% for both men and women. And then if it's over five years, it's 36% for men and 41% for women. The cost of long-term care can be expensive and having to pay five plus years would be expensive. And generally speaking, as a federal employee, people think about federal long-term care. But if you'll see here, there's an article from December 19, 2022, that they're suspending new applications into the federal long-term care insurance program. The suspension will last two years. It says that they're having a suspension needed to give the agency and its provider, John Hancock Life and Health Insurance Company, to thoroughly assess benefit offerings and established sustainable premium rates, which in layman's term means the current premium rate is not sustainable. So they're probably gonna be going up when they start back. John Hancock's contract expires at the end of 2023 and it was the only bidder last time they did the contract. It says there are a few concerns about the program's pricing as the agency approaches the end of the contract period. After the end of previous contracts in 2009 and 2016, participants faced premium hikes and or reduced benefits. Back in 2016, premium rates rose an average of 83% and up to 126% for some people. Now remember, 100% would be doubling, so more than doubling. So what does this mean? It seems that every so often when the contract renews, the premium goes up a lot. The reason it's going up a lot is because the premiums are not enough to be sustainable. One of the problems with long-term care policies is that the price is not fixed. At different times and at different age brackets, your policy can get more expensive. This is something that can be avoided if you use a life insurance policy to cover long-term care needs by getting an indexed universal life insurance policy that has chronic illness rider, which is a life insurance company's version of long-term care coverage. The cost of the life insurance is a fixed cost every month. 15 years from now, the cost of the life insurance will still be the same as it is today. It's a big difference compared to long-term care companies. Another key difference is that with the life insurance company, once you qualify and you go on claim, they will send you an annual amount of money that you can spend like cash throughout the year. This is much different than you having to pay for services, then turn in receipts and hope that you get refunded. Another thing about long-term care that makes people get heartburn is what if you pay for long-term care year after year, but then you die never having needed it. Another good benefit of the life insurance is that it, it, you're actually paying for a death benefit. If you never use the long-term care features of it, you still have a death benefit. That, that way, at least somebody's gonna get something from doing this. If you need help planning for your retirement, go to christycapital.com, click talk to an advisor. Since we're on the topic of life insurance, watch this video right here. Can you use your life insurance death benefit while living? There are a lot of great benefits about life insurance that you may not be aware of. This video will help explain it to you. My name is Mel Stubbs. See you next time.